2 square roots of 2. Okay, well, we don't even have to draw the picture because the area of a parallelogram is base times height. Right. And the base, they said, was 3 square roots of 2 times, times 2 square roots of 2. All right, well, the way we multiply is whole number times whole number, radical times radical. Six times. Three times two is six. Times two. And the square root of two times the square root of two is the square root of four, oh. which is six times two, or I did, 12. I, I did square root of two times square root of two is square root of two. No, it's two. Okay. Okay, what other questions do you have? Oh, I got <laughs> six. Okay, number six is dealing with an isosceles triangle, and I'm going to show you something that you can start off with every time you know it's an isosceles triangle. In an isosceles triangle, this is the altitude drawn from the vertex angle. These two angles are the base angles, and they are equal to each other. These two legs are equal to each other, and this base has been cut in half. So it tells you in number six that you have an isosceles triangle with sides of 10 and 10. So these are the two that are equal. And your base was 16, which means this is 8 and this is 8. Now the reason we need that is because to find the area of a triangle, we need to know the base and the height. Well, the base and the height are always perpendicular to each other. I already know the base. I need to find this. And the way I'm going to find it is through the right triangle trigonometry. Okay. This is a right triangle. I know two of the three sides. I can use the Pythagorean theorem. 10 squared equals 8 squared plus x squared. Subtract 64 from both sides. And take the square root. So now I know the pieces that I need to know to find the area of the triangle. I need to know the length of the base and the height. So it's 1 half times 16 times 6. Half of 16 is 8 and 8 times 6 is 48. So can you just do 16 times 6 divided by 2, right? Okay. Oh, so wait, when you do that, it has to be the whole entire base. Yes. Base. Right. Oh, my gosh. So it's half of the whole base uh, times the height. What you found was simply the area of one of the little triangles. Okay. If all you used was 8 and 6. Okay? Number 9. The only formulas we have are triangles at up to this point. Triangles, rectangles, rhombuses, and squares, right? right. And that is none of the above. No. It's two triangles. So I can find the area of each of the two triangles individually and then add them together. But that means I need to know the base and the height of each individual triangle. All right, so if I start with the bottom triangle, and the reason I'm starting with the bottom is because I know two of the three sides of the right triangle. Okay? Okay. So, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find this missing piece, which it's going to be 13 squared is equal to 5 squared plus x squared. All right, when I subtract 25 from both sides, I get 144, and so x is equal to 12. All right, so the base and the height of the bottom triangle are the two pieces that are perpendicular to each other. So, that's 12 and 5. So, let's start by finding the area of that one. It's half of 60 or 30. Okay? Now, on the top triangle, 
The base and the height are the two sides that are perpendicular to each other. Am I given the two measures that I need? No, I need to find, we'll call this Y. Because if my height is 12, the side perpendicular to that is Y. Well, now I know two of the three sides of that triangle. So I'm going to use my Pythagorean theorem again. 15 squared, which is 225, is equal to 12 squared plus Y squared. Subtract 144 from both sides. You have 81. So Y equals 9. All right? So now I have the base and the height necessary to find the area of the top triangle. So the top triangle is 1 half of 12 times 9, or 6 times 9, which is what? 54. So the area of this was 54, the area of this was 30, so altogether the area is 80. Okay, and then... Is 12 just like um, 6, basically? Yeah, but it's different. Is the answer 14? No. It's 8, isn't it? I got 18. It's 9 squared. I got 18. Okay. Let's look at number 12. For number 12, we are told that we have an equilateral triangle. Okay, well, before we start worrying about everything else, what do we know about an equilateral triangle? All sides are equal. Not only are all sides equal, all, all angles. angles. All angles are equal, which means that this is 60, this is 60, uh, and when I draw this line, which cuts the bottom in half, it also 30. cuts that 60. So it's a 30, 60, 90. It's a 30, 60, 90. Uh, now the perimeter is 18. So the three equal sides add up to 18. So that means that this is 6, this is 6, three and, three. and this is 3 and 3. Okay. All right, now the reason we needed to know that is because we're going to have to use right triangle stuff to find the height because you need the height to find the area. So if I have a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle and I'm looking for this, which is labeled H, that's which side? Long. The long leg. How do you find the long leg in a 30, 60, 90? 30. Short leg times... Three. Square root of three. Wait, question. This is what I have. How do you know which one's the short leg and which one's the long leg? The short leg is opposite the thirty degree angle, the smallest angle. Oh, okay. Because I was doing like the short leg was like part of thirty. That's probably why I got wrong. Okay. So the height is three square roots of three, right? So now I have the pieces needed find the area of my triangle. I have the base and I have the height. So my triangle, the area is one half base times height, which is one half six times three square roots of three. You can either say half of six is three and three times three is nine or half of 18 is nine. But the answer is nine square roots of three. Number 18 we're going to come back to because we're going to learn a specific formula and that one was kind of really complicated. Great. So instead of making us apply a bunch of old crazy stuff, we're just going to use our specific formula. Know, why now do we have to like figure out the theorem? Why can't we just get them like we used to? <laughs> okay. For number 24, I did 8 times sine of 32, but I, it's wrong. So what did I do wrong? Okay, we have an isosceles triangle. I probably didn't draw them. It's because of 32, you should be using 16. An isosceles triangle, these are equal, this has been split in half. Oh. The vertex angle was 32.